So we had a pretty good success with the last video, actually. This thing did move under its own power. Um, it ran well and, you know, throttle and idle and all that stuff works. So that's pretty great. What we have to do now is make it, you know, actually drive. Um, so we, we have a rear brake that we're adding. We have to tighten up this belt. We have to rebuild the uh, driver and driven pulleys. Yeah, there's a lot of work to do to get this thing to actually drive. But by the end of this video, this thing's going to rip. So we're super excited for that. First, we're going to take apart this uh, driver clutch pulley and just make sure that everything's lubed up and nothing's seized or anything. The driven clutch pulley is the real problem though because as you can see it's not fully extended it's seized where it is right now. Here's the first look. Let's see. I'm not exactly sure how this comes apart so we might have to pull this or something. Ooh, whoa. Okay this honestly doesn't look bad. Uh, that roller removes, this one does not, so we'll, we'll have to clean up some of this stuff, but um, it's kind of cool, you can see exactly how this works, it's pretty simple. So as the engine speeds up, these rollers get forced out, and as the centrifugal force increases, as RPM increases, that forces these out more, which pushes that, this in, which makes basically from a small sprocket to a big sprocket. So that's how that one works. So all the rollers are cleaned up, uh, none of them are stuck anymore, we lubed them up, Everything's working pretty well. There we go. So we have this part seized to the shaft it's mounted to, and all we need to do is free that up so we can pop it off and then everything will spring apart. So we're using our hydraulic press. We haven't really used this in a while, but hopefully. Yeah, cool. Seems like it's moving. Hopefully that's enough and hopefully when we release this, everything will come with it. Oh, nope. Just seized more. Great. <laughs> Yay. Device basically just clamped all the pieces of this drive driven pulley together. So we're kind of stuck. We can't really pull it apart at all. There's nothing to pull on. We can't twist it. It's really hard. But we're gonna see if, without the keyway, because we were able to get the keyway out, that if we just run the engine and you know it's it's at max torque right now, so maybe we'll be able to get it to just like free itself or something. I don't know. Nothing can really explode at us since everything's all clamped together, so it shouldn't be dangerous. We'll just have to hope that it comes apart. And if it doesn't, I guess we just have more torque and this one doesn't move. So. transferred through that and it's not even being held together. It didn't move, but honestly, I mean, I, I think it kind of needs the extra torque. I don't know. So when we left this thing and went back to school, this was stuck closed. Um, so we were just gonna leave it like that, but I saw Jay Leno talking about how he restores cars and how he puts parts in a mix of ATF and acetone. So we filled up this Go Power Sports bucket with that mixture and we let this soak for like a week and I took it out, started hitting it with a mallet, and it popped out. So I think we're in business, yeah, buddy. Look at that. That's pretty cool. This thing was oh, this thing was really seized. There's a bunch of corrosion and rust in yeah. there. Yeah. So I also did some de-rusting too, so yeah. all of it kind of worked together to get it unstuck. Okay. Oh. Well it hasn't moved yet. Whoa. Okay. You know, no crazy explosions, but that is off. Cool. Let's see. Let's take a look at it. It's definitely rusty. But, um, you know. At least we'll be able to clean it now. Aunt, dude, that plastic, that looks like new. So when we were doing some test runs on the jack stand, we noticed that the axle bearings are pretty shot, as you can see. A lot of play there. So. We got new bearings and seals here, so we're gonna swap those out so it's not flopping all over the place. All right, here we go. Had to go out and buy the uh, largest wrench we could at Home Depot, and it actually worked though. So, we're finally getting this off. This thing was super tight and had a lot of rust in the threads, so. There we 
go. That is some old grease. It just looks like mud. Finally got these bearings out. These are cooked. There's a lot of play in them. Um, and now it's time to see this little collar thing. There we go. And let's look at this old grease. Oh my gosh. It literally looks like mud. That is horrible. That is profane. Uh, <laughs> that's, is this safe for YouTube? <laughs> so we had these bearings sitting in the freezer, so it should go in very easily. Just a little tap. Nice. A lot easier than taking them out. All right. We just pulled this off from the mock-up on the frame and we ended up going to Tractor Supply Co today and got this Ford tractor muffler. Okay. We're just gonna cut our stock exhaust. We really have no need for this and they're not very valuable. So we're just gonna use our swag porter band table. And here we go. All right, we just made this little S-bend. It'll be a really easy way for us to just kind of shift the exhaust over a little bit to the left. Okay, so the exhaust is done. This is definitely the largest exhaust we've ever made for any of our projects. I'll be honest, Daniel used to do all of our exhaust welding, so this is my first time ever welding exhaust. Uh, blew through it in a couple of places. It was a little difficult, but by the end, you know, this weld, I was a lot better. But um, yeah, it fits up really well, and hopefully we'll be able to fit it in without having to remove the engine, because that would be a pain, but we'll see. Ooh, okay. So if our engine's loose, then we can fit our exhaust. Cool. We got the exhaust complete. We have a little bit more work to do. We want to position the muffler a little bit better. It's hanging down a little bit too low, but it's really late tonight and I gotta go back to college. I got an exam tomorrow. So we're gonna, you know, start it up, see how our pulleys run and then take it for a drive. Okay. First impressions, it's a lot quieter. That's yeah. bearable. It I mean, sounds cool. Yeah, it's still pretty loud, but it's got a deeper, less kind of buzzy tone to it.
Thank you all for your comments telling us that our driven pulley was on backwards. You know, we saw the belt getting all wonky, moving different directions in the back, so we definitely have to change that. We were looking at, you know, flipping our driven pulley around into the right direction. The problem with that is that it goes directly into the line where our chain wants to run. So then we'd either have to run idler sprockets or a second jack shaft, and we really don't have space for that, especially with like major frame components and the swing on back here in the spring. There's not too much space where we could put that. So we were kind of worried that we're gonna run into dead ends there. So our decision was to use these lock collars and just lock this pulley fully in, fully tight. So basically our clutch pulley system is now just gonna be one clutch pulley that will act like a clutch and then just a pulley in the back. It'll be a fixed gear ratio, but it'll be a lot simpler, a lot less headaches. And you know, if we need to change in the future, we can. Originally our plan was to use these locking collars and just lock it down like that. But we tightened it up and you know, this can still spin. So then all our power would just be going and spinning that. So we need this piece so we can lock everything together and it has this keyway that locks it to, you know, the output shaft. Um, the only issue is, you know, how to do that since everything's aluminum. And our solution is, luckily we bought two of these lock collars. So we'll slide two on and we'll slap this guy down, put him in the keyway. And, you know, there is some play, which is kind of odd, but, you know, it's meant to do that. So, you know, it'll work. Okay, so that's pretty tight. You know, it still spins though. But with our spacers, we have the perfect clearance to add the E-clip. E-clip. Oh, e -clip. I don't know. Oh, we have it. E clip and wood drift key, and then it'll stay still, basically. Yes, definitely. So, off camera, we did a little bit of work. The main thing we did was just mounted the pulley back up now that it's fixed and it doesn't expand or contract. And uh, when we mounted it back up, we mounted it offset a little bit. So, when this driven pulley moves to the right, it'll kind of be straight, if that makes sense. Uh, another thing we did is replace the old thumb throttle because it was plastic and it was cracking and it wasn't uh, staying on the handlebars. So, we got this one from Amazon. It's an ATV thumb throttle, it's billet aluminum, and we'll put an affiliate link, so if you want to check it out, it'll actually help our channel. So, now it's time to see if it works. need to line the belt a little bit more. I feel I smell a little bit of kind of burny smell, but there also could be, you know, oil in there from rebuilding and stuff. Um, 
You know, it's not blindingly fast, obviously. This is a 23 horsepower motor, so it's not super fast, and it doesn't have a transmission or anything. But I would say the acceleration is comparable to like a fully built mini bike with a Predator 212 or uh, with a torque converter as well, or our um, our four tracks we have. You know, it's it, it goes. Um, we might we might adjust the gearing a little bit. You know, make it a little faster. But um, the one thing that I'm not going to do is go fast in this thing right now because we the front right brake is the only thing that works right now. So we have to go through all of our brakes before we're going to really rip this thing and you know put it through its paces. Yeah. But I mean the diff, the rear diff feels so much more solid because last time I could feel it shaking around. It's just it's actually it actually works. Y'all could probably see I was happy driving this thing. This thing is this thing's a blast. You know what else would make it faster? Some a turbo, yeah. a turbo, huh? I mean, that is, that is on the table. You know, like this, this video if you want to see us put a turbo on this Yeah, thing. let us know. Cause and we're, subscribe. Because we're thinking of it. This isn't exactly the best engine because of all that pitting in there, but, you know. This thing is awesome. We're really happy with how this has turned out. And um, there's a lot more work to do, you know, so stay tuned. And we're going to make this thing look a lot cooler as well with body panels.